Hi guys, Chris here with a Surface 3 clone. This is the Vito W10 Elite. Now this one interested me because first off, it's not an Atom X5Z8300. I have just seen so many of those tablets and it's driving me a little crazy. I will no doubt probably review one or two more, but I'm trying not to review that many of them now because I have just through and throughout tested that chipset and I know exactly how it performs. So this one actually has really good spec considering. So it's got a full aluminium, well a metal body. It has a kickstand and it has an Atom X7 Z8700, 4GB of dual channel RAM, 128 gigabyte eMMC. So quite a large one. Hopefully it's going to have good speeds on it. And it also has wireless AC and Bluetooth 4 as well as USB 3 type C for charging and data with a full separate USB 3 port 2 on there. So spec wise, it sounds really good. Now I picked this one up from GearBest. It was on sale now at the moment, I think for around $338. So it's a little expensive there. And just be careful when you order this, if you're gonna use DHL, I just wanted to show you very quickly how ridiculous their fees are getting now. Now I can't, if I use Express Cruise, I can't avoid paying taxes and I accept that. I accept that I have to pay what's called EVA and that is 21% tax here in Spain which is fine but have a look at this. The administration fee is almost 35 euros and I just find that to be pretty horrendous. So on this whole tablet here I had to pay 38 euros in tax. This fee just seems to keep increasing. Normally it was, well first off, it was only 10 euros and it's gone to 15 and now for some reason it seems to be 34. It is just outrageous what they are charging now DHL Spain. So I am going to try in the future to pick things up now with the free mail and not get hit with so many taxes here because really it's killing me these kind of expenses. So if you don't want to pay that tax, get the free mail service. There's another service for me, at least here in Spain, that's called SF Express, and that normally comes through free as well. It takes a little longer than DHL, because DHL only needed, I think, it was about three or four days to go from Hong Kong, China, pass through Germany and down into Spain for me. Anyway, ranting aside about DHL, I'll just get this open now. So I can see it's using uh, the typical double boxing that... Gearbest have been doing now probably for the last three months or so and I'm actually quite happy with the way they've been boxing things up now. There was a period there where they were boxing these these tablets up and the mobile phones just literally just bubble wrap and throwing them in the DHL bag which wasn't really good. So I'll just get this ripped open here. Okay so just ripped off the side of the box and get this out here. So it has a plain looking box. Uh, no markings on there by the looks of it with any regard to spec there, so no, that's not mentioned. So let's get this open and have a look. Hopefully it is in good condition. Uh, they did put a little bit of bubble wrap actually inside the box there, but otherwise I think it was bouncing around a little bit. Right, there we go. Get that lid off. So let's have a look at the tablet here. So the screen of it, I didn't actually mention that in the start, is a, a 1920 by 1200 resolution. So that is a 16 by 10 ratio. Uh, unfortunately, it's not 3 by 2 like the actual Surface 3. So let's have a look at the build. You can see the bezels of the sides are rather large. Uh, and there are two front-facing stereo speakers. I will check those out later on and see how those sound. And along the bottom there, we can see there is the Pogo port connector for the... The dock you can get. Now I do have the dock, that is coming. I actually ordered that separately because I was a bit worried about having to pay taxes on both items. So that is coming free post. And here is obviously where the kickstand is. And that, actually that feels quite nice. That is not a fixed position kickstand at all. So it's just like the surface that you give a good range there. Just prop that up. And you can see on the side there is a full-sized USB 3 port. That is micro HDMI out and the USB 3 Type-C port there, which is used for charging. Here is a 3.5mm headphone jack, and of course the Windows button. Front-facing camera is a 2 megapixel one, and on the back corner we have a rear 5 megapixel camera. Now I can see they've made an interesting design choice here. 
that the micro SD card slot now well it has a, a actual slot that you're going to need to use a tool to remove on I don't particularly like that because I like quick and easy access it's a shame they didn't use an eject mechanism there so we have two holes there that would be for stereo microphones so the mic is on this, the mic should sound a lot better there having two of them. Volume up and down and power on. And you can see the Vido logo down there with the, a little bit of Chinese uh, text characters there. So the build of it, actually this feels really good. It feels very solid. There's no flex on that at all. And it does feel premium. Not bad at all. I will just have a look at the weight of this. Before I have a look at what else is in the box. So the weight of it is 649 grams. So, I mean, that's not the lightest of devices, but it's not too bad. It actually feels quite evenly distributed there. Definitely not bad at all. So I'll see if this will power on while I have a look and see what else is in the box. So just notice there is a little gap here. That probably would be the ambient light sensor. And along here, another, which would be, I think, a status LED for when it is charging. So just power this on. Hopefully there's some battery left in there. And have a look what else is in the box. So it's just started up now with the Vido logo. A Vido, sorry. So what else is inside here? Okay, they've given us a cable there. So that is uh, USB Type-C to USB Type-C. So it's a Type-C charger, obviously. And that has a two, two pin. US style or Chinese US style. So it's rated there to uh, 12 volts, 2 amps, or 5 volts, 3 amps that it's going to be charging at. And then you can see the, the output there. Sorry, I get the camera to focus on that. So you can use the spec of it. And these just clip out. So for US users, that's really good. I will need an adapter for that, of course. And there's just a quick start guide that is in English. And a warranty card or something there that's in that's in Chinese so that's what is in the box there and have a look now at the tablet so the screen on it is actually fully laminated which is good we don't see fully laminated screens often in this price range or these ta tablets so there is no gap in the display whatsoever there so below is the IPS screen and at the moment the brightness seems to be turned down Let's put that up to 100%. Uh, that is quite a nice looking screen. Not bad at all. So I can see there's something there in Chinese. And a couple of recent files on there, which is interesting. So someone's already had a bit of a play around with this. Hopefully they were just testing it out. Uh, 104 gigabytes free on that 128 gigabyte eMMC. And I'll move over now and just have a quick look at system and the device manager. So, 4 gigabytes of RAM, you can see there the Atom X7 Z8700, and Windows is activated. And under the device manager, see how long that takes to load up. Took a little while, and the disk drive is a Toshiba. So that's a 128G72. And have a look now at the wireless adapter. So network adapters, it's a Intel dual band wireless AC3165. That is good. Not a bad chipset there. That is the same chipset used in the Cubi 9. Sorry, in the Cubi 7 book. And the Teclast X3 Pro. So a very quick size comparison. I know people have been asking me to do this. So that is 10.1 inches. And this is a 9.7 inch 4x3 Retina tablet. This is the X98 Plus 2. So you can see there, that that's similar kind of size. And they are smaller tablets. And in the background there, that is my Chewy HI12. So this has a 12 inch 3x2 inch, uh, 3 by 2 ratio screen. And you see that, uh, yeah, that's definitely a lot bigger. But that's just to give you... Just a rough idea of the sizes of them. So you can see that yes, it is a little smaller. And personally, I like the larger tablets because I've become more accustomed to that after using my Surface Pro uh, 3 back in the day that was 12 inches. 
and really I do find that a lot easier to work on. But something like this definitely has its advantages because it is more portable and you're able to put that, it will hold that even, but now there's got a kickstand as well, it, well you don't really need to hold it, but it just makes it a lot more portable, easier to put in a bag or slip in a pouch or something like that. Now if you're wondering about what charge rate it will be charging at, the back of the tablet, just on the other side of the kickstand listed it is 12 volts, 2 amps. So I do expect it to have a lot faster charge times than the typical 5 volts. And I will check that out and gauge those times and report back in my full review about that there. You can see it also has a little stellus LED that has lit up green there once it's charged, starts charging. So I just wanted to quickly check out a few things. So the window scaling is 150% and there is a setting there to change the brightness automatically. So you can disable that ambient light sensor that is there and that will increase the brightness so it's not automatically changing for you. And that should allow me to get quite a bit more brightness out of the screen. But the brightness doesn't actually seem too bad there. I'm definitely enjoying the screen, the fact that it's fully laminated. So the micro SIM card slot here at the top has a little tray. I don't particularly like this because I'm someone that likes to swap some uh, micro SDs in and out all the time. I'm just going to check now if my 128 gigabyte Pro Plus card is going to work. Hopefully I will have no problems with this and it should be able to read it just fine. I have this formatted to FAT, uh, FAT32.2 I think it is, or XFAT. So this hopefully will be detected. I just slotted that in now and that should allow me to access my data. Yeah, that's going to work so that's fine. No problems with accessing 128 gigabyte cards there. So another thing I also wanted to test was how do the speakers sound. So I'm just going to load this track up here. Oh, that doesn't sound very good at all, actually. Um, I just noticed that, okay, they are stereo, obviously, left and right speakers. Um, but there is no bass whatsoever. That doesn't sound good. That's quite tinny. Uh, and the volume could be a little bit better. Just my first impressions on that. And another couple of tests, just to see if that Type-C port will actually access. This is a HyperX Savage USB pen drive here. Just to see if that's actually accessible using the Type-C port. Uh, looks like it is. There we go. So that's popped up all right. I will test the speeds of that later on in my full review. I will benchmark that. And another thing I also like to check to see if external hard drives like this one terabyte drive I have here, if that is going to work. Because there's a lot of tablets recently and some of the Ultrabooks I've tested, like the EasyBook 2, that wouldn't actually power external hard drives. So let's see if that's going to work. Looking good so far, there's a blue light meaning USB 3, and there we go, yes, that lets me access my folders within that, so that it's very good to see that I can use both of those ports there. And my last test will be to see if the Type-C port will also access an external hard drive. I'm not too sure whether it will put the power out, wow, that USB 3 port is quite tight, being new, so I just plug that in, and there we go, yes. Accessing that. Uh, no, okay, that's not going to power it. It's clicking away. It's making a clicking noise. This is the common fault that I've had on various different tablets and Ultrabooks. And no, that is not going to work. So only the USB 3 port will be able to power your external hard drives at least. Alright, so that is the Vito W10 Elite. And first impressions are the build of it I'm really liking. It's actually very solid, has a good weight distribution, good feel to it, no flex. Fully laminated panel, 128GB eMMC. Of course I will have to benchmark the speeds of that. And the battery life is something else I will definitely be checking out. The thermals as well. But having a full metal design that it does have, I think thermals on this hopefully should be really good. No doubt Vito put a thermal pad somewhere around here to transfer heat into the to casing. So it shouldn't really get as hot as those plastic clad tablets that I often review. So keep an eye on the playlist. I will have some more upcoming videos on this one. I'll probably just release first a review, or not a review, just a video showing the drive speeds and a few benchmarks and thermals. And later on I will have a full detailed in-depth review of this particular model. 
Thank you for watching this video and hopefully I will catch you back in the channel soon.